Alright, hello everybody. So at the end of the last video we had DWM set up along with ST. Now I would like to do some more configuration on both DWM and ST, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and install Emacs. Uh, this video hopefully will actually be short, but we'll see about that. So um, we could install DW or, uh, Emacs just from Pac-Man, from the standard repositories, but I'm going to go ahead and build Emacs from source. So Emacs, yeah, you'll see what I searched before, Emacs git Savannah. So we're going to go straight to the main Emacs repository, and we're just going to clone it and build it from source. Um, this way, this is a really nice way to get all of the most up-to-date features of Emacs. Uh, usually there's some pretty cool stuff going on that hasn't made it back into um, the actual packaged versions. So let's go ahead, let's see, let's make a directory called mm, packages. And I'll go ahead and run this. Oh wow, I don't have git installed. <clears throat> Let's take care of that. Alright, while I'm thinking about it, we should also edit our um, pacman config file etsy.pacman.conf to enable parallel downloads. Parallel downloads. Uh, that way we don't have to wait for uh, each download before the next one can begin. So let's try our git clone again. Uh, now, as you may imagine, this is going to be a pretty big repository, so um, I may have to pause the recording here, but we'll see. Once the progress bar pops up, I will make that decision. Okay, well, before I go, there is one thing I've been noticing. So you see how DWM is kind of stacking these all up? That's because um, my mod D binding is not only bound to um, D menu run like I want, it's also bound to uh, like decrementing the number, probably incrementing the number of uh, windows in what they call the master area. So I've apparently put that up to three now, which is why they're all in this one column. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So if we go into configs, because you'll see if I restart DWM, uh, it goes back to the normal, uh, like one thing in master and, and uh, everything else in the stack. So let's go ahead and take care of that binding conflict. So I'm just going to hop into config.h. Uh, let me make this a little wider while this installs. Let's see, so we're looking for somewhere else where this is defined. Yeah, so let's see. Yeah, that's decrement master. So what I usually bind that to is, um, let's see. Yeah, I don't mind I being that one. So I usually bind this to U. So then uh, those two are right next to each other. And it's just up from J and K when I'm using my uh, Vim bindings. So that's good. Hopefully that's the only occurrence of that. The other thing I usually like to bind, this is a little bit more involved, but still a good change to make. I like having my browser on mod B. So you'll see right now that mod B is going to be bound to something that hides, shows and hides our bar. Yeah, toggle bar right here. So I would like to change this to look more like this one. So we're going to do mod b. I'm going to set this to browser, uh, which we're going to define in just a second. Let's go. So this is one nice thing you can do with uh, DWM, uh, is just copy and paste stuff. So for example, I'm just going to copy this term command. I'm going to call it browser, uh, and I'm going to call this Firefox. So just you just want to make sure that this matches this, and we should be good. Okay, the last modification I'd like to make right now uh, occurs at this bottom corner. You can see that there's a little gap here. At least I hope you can see that. 
Uh, we want to turn that off. Uh, let's see. How do we turn that off? I have to remember now. Oh, I think it is this. Border PX. Ah, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's this one. And one other thing while we're here, uh, I do like the master to occupy exactly half the screen, so I'll do that. And our client starts at one. Yeah, I think this is what I want to change. All right, let's give that a shot. Sudo make clean install. Okay. Yeah, we get a warning because we're not using toggle bar. Okay, there we go. So that did take care of the spacing issue. Um, what else do we do? So now when I do daemon you run, excellent. Perfect. All right, looks like everything went through. Now did my browser binding, perfect. Oh, uh, hold on. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we can quit Firefox entirely. Ah, the one, one more thing inside of our config file. I do like to change the kill client binding. So it's usually set to mod shift C. Uh, I live a little bit dangerously and I just bind that to mod Q. So I don't have to hit uh, shift or anything to kill the clients. Let me make sure that XKQ isn't bound anywhere else. So yeah, mod shift Q is bound to killing DWM and mod Q is bound to killing uh, individual programs. So I'm going to clean install. So I'll do mod shift Q to reload DWM. And then if I hit mod Q, that should kill the client. So mostly I've been in terminals so far, and I usually exit the terminal by just hitting uh, control D uh, just to exit the shell. But um, now I can do mod Q as well. Okay, so while this is downloading, I will go ahead and pause the recording. I'm trying to squeeze in under 10 minutes here. We'll see if it's probably not going to happen, though. All right, that didn't last very long. I just remembered one more thing, actually, that I did want to change in DWM. Um, so as you may have noticed, the bar at the top is the same color, both in the VM and on my actual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color here. Um, of this bar. So let's try to find where that is. Dimmy font colors. So let's see what we got here. Border. Ooh. Maybe I should have looked for this before I opened it up. Okay. Well, apparently it's not immediately obvious. So, I guess we'll just go back to the... Uh, we'll go back to what we were intending to do. Okay, so we now have Emacs in here. And let's take a peek at the install instructions. So I think that we're going to have to install some programs here. Um, but we'll find out pretty quickly. So ba the main thing we want to do is run configure, but to get that to work, we actually need to um, run autoconf. Oh good, we have that installed. Undefined macro, if this token. Let's try auto recon. Well, I'm trying to do it live, but if I run into too many issues, I will uh, take a break. So hopefully we have configure now. Beautiful. Okay, this shouldn't take too long. When we actually do the compilation, I will definitely pause the video, because that takes a while even on my um, main machine. But I anticipate we're going to run into some issues here which is part of the reason I'd like to just watch it play out.
I was always a little bit afraid of doing this. I thought it'd be pretty involved to build Emacs. And then I thought it might also take a really long time. It, it does take a while. It's certainly not instantaneous or anything. But, you know, 15, 20 minutes every week or so when I decide to update Emacs is not too big of a deal. So now, here we go. Uh, let's just do this. Make sure everything went correctly. Okay, it looks like we're, up. we're good to go. Alright, so I think this... Let's run LSCPU. We only have one CPU. So when I run this on my machine, I run make-j4, uh, which allows like four recipes to run at one time, I think. Um, but since since I have four cores on all my computers... However, in this case, I am just going to run make by itself. And this should take a while. So I am going to go ahead and stop the recording. The rest of the... Well, I guess while it does run... Take a look at install. So, so far we are on step number three. So, when configure finishes. Yeah, so some, some things that are not in here. Uh, the first step, okay, it seems kind of obvious to that this is the first step to obtain the source code. So, I don't really count that as the first step. After that, of course, you're going to go into the directory. And you saw that I tried to run autoconf, uh, which failed. So, when that happens, just run auto reconf. To rebuild the configure script. Once you have configure, dot slash configure, uh, you can pick up back here. As long as configure works. Uh, we did get a warning about some mail thing. Don't worry about that. Uh, after configure is finished, you just invoke make. Uh, and then we will do the rest of this. So we're running make right now. That's the step that takes a while. Then we're going to test the new installation by running source emacs q. Uh, we're probably not going to run make check on this virtual machine. Sometimes I run that on my machine. And then we will run sudo make install to make this our system-wide Emacs uh, installation. So with that, I'll just let this keep running. And I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, it looks like it finished. Let's just make sure that everything went well. Source Emacs-Q. Uh, that took quite a while, uh, but it looks like it worked out. Cool. All right. Well, we've got Emacs installed. Well, we hold on. We have Emacs. Let's close that for a second. Sudo make install. So now we're going to have Emacs installed, uh, which means that we're ready for the rest of the videos. As a quick aside, I cannot recommend <laughs> installing Emacs like this inside of a virtual machine. That took a really long time. Um, for future updates, I'm probably going to look into transferring, or copying, I mean, my uh, Emacs executable that I build on the full desktop into the virtual machine. Uh, cause I can't really do a full rebuild like that. Uh, I, think, I think it took over an hour. Um, but anyway, that's how you would do it. And if you were doing it on, a phys on physical hardware, it would, it would be much, much faster. Um, so, we should be all set now to begin the Emacs series. Uh, that should be the content of the next video. I'll see you guys then. Alright, alright, hold on. We gotta do, we gotta make sure Emacs works. Okay. Now I'll see you guys next time.